Bowers Game Corner presents Gen Con Video Bonanza 2015. Brought to you by Gatekeeper Games, makers of the King's Armory, Thunder Track, the new sequel to Turbo Rally Card Racing, and the generous support of our Kickstarter backers. Ahoy there, you two are back again today for more of our Gen Con Bonanza Explosion Blowout. Sponsored by our awesome sponsors down below here live at Gen Con 2015. Teen. Well, I think you can figure out that this isn't actually... Yeah, let's get down to my Thursday impressions. Now, uh, Thursday was a little bit of a different day for me. I actually didn't get to play any games fully... Oh, well, I got to play some, but no new games fully through, which is something I normally strive for every single Gen Con, but we had a lot of stuff to do. Uh, so before I get started, I do want to mention that I use their UPS service. I'm going to actually make a video about this. Um, if you've never heard of their UPS service, it is fantastic in there. I shipped 11 games, and some of them were big box games. We had a giant box for 50 bucks from Indianapolis to Queens, New York for one of the guys that backs the Kickstarter. He threw a bunch of money and said, hey, can you get this big stack of games? I was like... Yeah, sure. So we made a little extra money off that. Uh, but yeah, great deals at the UPS. Very friendly. They packed it themselves. We didn't need a box. We just handed them the stuff. We were in and out in about 10 minutes. Great thing. Um, but what games did I see? I saw a bunch of games. Uh, we did over 35 to 40 videos yesterday. So we talked to a lot of people. We talked to Paizo, Indie Game Alliance, Tuesday Night Games Maker, Tuesday Night Booms, Flux Capacity, IDW, Bigfoot Games whole bunch of them. So what stood out to me? What were the what were the games that I was like, ooh, that one really had me going. There were a couple of them. First, I talked to the guys from Two Rooms and a Boom. Uh, I'm a big fan of Two Rooms and a Boom. I think it's absolutely outstanding. I think it is going to carve out its own niche as a party game. And I feel like it's going to be a party game that a lot of people are going to play for a long time. So um, I was excited to hear that they were showing off their new upcoming game, which is Russian Roulette. Uh, Championship Russian Roulette, I believe, is the name of it. Where the heck is that list? Uh, yeah, it is Russian Roulette. And uh, it sounded interesting. I, I want to sit back and I want to demo it uh, and see how it works. But I believe that's actually coming to Kickstarter later this year. Um, so it's going to see if it really can follow up on their soft or their initial success A Two Rooms and a Boom. Uh, another game that I saw that really had me going was Lynn Vander Games' Albion Legacy. Now, I'm not, more, I'm not the biggest miniature games fan, but this one had a really cool idea. It was a cooperative game, Arthurian Legacy, different roles and abilities. But the thing that really intrigued me was the plan that they're, they're going to be releasing different games that will connect to this game. So they were talking about how they're going to have a uh, Robin Hood thing. So you can play with the characters from Robin Hood and the characters with from Arthurian Legacy and put them together. Gorgeous miniatures. Really nice components. Like we're talking about they already had uh, like inserts that look like stuff from the Broken Token. Like they were really nice looking inserts. Um, definitely above my price point, but very, very cool looking. Uh, that was All Being Legacy from uh, Lynn Vander Games. I also talked to IDW, and I gotta say, so far, if you wanna know a company who, in my opinion, killed it at Gen Con so far, it's IDW. They were showing a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, they had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shadow of the Past. Now, they did not have that as an actual game there. You could not, you could hear about it, and I did. I got a video all about it, and I was salivating. It sounded cool playing as either Shredder or the Ninja Turtles and like episodic content. Uh, sounded really, really cool to me. But they also had the expansion to Machi Koro, which sounded pretty cool. They had a game called Awesome Kingdom, which sounded really, really neat. It's a, I think it was a 30-minute dungeon crawl, episodic content gorgeous artwork and it looked really cool so be on the lookout for awesome kingdom um they had a, a new game from uh, the killer bunnies guy who i believe he's only made he hasn't made any games in like the last eight years or something like that called trap it looked really cool uh and i guess they're making that into an eight part series and looking on the list Seeing if there was anything else that really wowed me, there really wasn't too much to be honest with you. Now we were, uh, we were down in the uh, in what's called like the uh, the newer gamers hallway for the most part, the newer publishers hallway for the most part, and a lot of the people there. This was really cool. A lot of people there were people who had been on Kickstarter and now they actually had games. That was really cool for me because I got to saw in particular one guy who was there one year just demoing his game. And, and this was, he didn't have a booth, he didn't have a table, he wasn't anywhere, he was just kind of walking around demoing it. And then the next year, he actually had a little table where he was demoing it. We did a video of the last year. 
But in this year, he had his own booth, and he was selling out of his game on day one. So that was really cool to see, just that that cosmetic growth. And I, I really like that a lot. I like that about the hobby. And hey, maybe next year he moves closer to the middle with all the big boys. And it's uh, it's really cool to see people grow when you go each and every year. Uh, other than that, nothing too special yesterday. Just a lot of interviews. We uh, we ate some yummy pizza at the Marriott that was connected. We got lost in the sky tunnels a couple times. And we got a, we got a big day tomorrow, though. Um, we're going to go to the AEG Big Game Night, so we'll be talking about that. We're going to be... Um, we're going to be doing on a Kickstarter Q&A panel, so I'm kind of excited to see how that goes, me being on a panel, which is funny because just a couple of years ago, I was sitting at one of these panels as I contemplated how to kickstart my own game. So uh, it's kind of cool that I went from the audience to the stage, as crazy as that is, just in like three years. Um, but yeah, should be a good day. Should be a great Gen Con. It's fantastic. Uh, really nice people. Seas of nice people. I do want to say, though, that wow, this is the first day at Gen Con, the first official day. Uh, attendance is way up. I, I, I was flabbergasted at how more crowded it felt just from last year to this year. It was just a sea, a wave of people. And it always is a wave of people, but it felt like it was more people. So I'm really excited to see what their early projected numbers are. So that was my Thursday impression of Gen Con 2015. If you were at Gen Con, let me know in the comments below. Tell me something I need to check out. A game that was you were just like, God, that is awesome. You check that out, Bauer. Uh, and if you're not at Gen Con, tell me your favorite salsa recipe. Uh, write all the contents down below, and I might make it on Saturday at Gen Con and give it out to people. Or I might not. Uh, probably, probably the not. But it could. Well, I can't really cook. Yeah, yeah, it probably won't. So just, just don't, don't post in the comment below if you, unless you really want to. Bowers Game Corner presents Gen Con Video Bonanza 2015. Brought to you by Gatekeeper Games, makers of the King's Armory, Thunder Track, the new sequel to Turbo Rally Card Racing, and the generosity of these great companies. They support us. Go support them.